TV Land. It is your boy Freelancer Joe, and it is once again time for Drinks with Joe. Yes, it is I, your charming, debonair, suave, and yet incredibly humble host, Joe. Well, it's just Joe today, because I'm not doing any freelancer stuff right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm just really, really sort of out of sorts. Out of sorts right now. Uh, your boy Joe, your boy Joe, spent just a little too much time last night binge watching Daredevil season three and stayed up way past his bedtime. Ugh. It was worth it, though. Well, it's hard to say if it was worth it. It was entertaining television, and I'm saying this while I'm going ahead and pour myself a drink. And boy, this is definitely going to have an impact. <sighs> One thing I noticed as I've gotten older, one drink is equivalent to like needing an extra two hours of sleep. And since I'm already running a sleep deficit because I stayed up so late watching Daredevil season three, that I might spend the entire day tomorrow sleeping in, which would not necessarily be a bad thing. I mean, that would be a bad thing from a productive uh, point of view, but uh, not so much a bad thing as far as my body is concerned. So what did I think of Daredevil Season 3? Well, I thought it was on point and really, really good. I have have not been disappointed with any of the Daredevil seasons. The first one was obviously completely awesome. Um, second one, the first half was great. Uh, the second half... Hmm... I'm not going to give it too much of a knock, but I just have not liked the electric character. Uh, you'd think it would be a character that I'd really like. I mean, it's a fairly attractive female trained in martial arts that does ninja assassin-y things. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Eh, just didn't like her. Um, but yeah, Daredevil Season 3, though. Really, really, really good because they brought the Kingpin back. They call him the Kingpin or just Kingpin? Oh, whatever. As much as the uh, raging lefty uh, Vincent D'Onofrio is, he is just awesome as Kingpin. I, just the facial expressions and little hand things he does. Oh, man. His Kingpin. I, I guess it's really hard to make a... If you look at the comic book renditions of Kingpin. I mean, it's really hard to have somebody that physically represents him. Um, in the Daredevil movie, I mean, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Duncan Clark? The guy they had for him, I mean, he had basically the physical stature, but, um, yeah, no, he just didn't have that, that, uh, the vibe that D'Onofrio was able to give it, and, oh, if you're ever around the Kingpin, don't worry, Jet. Well, number one, stay away from corridors. If you watch season one, you know what I'm talking about for there. And if season three, uh, don't wear a jacket. And if he asks you for a jacket, sorry. Just just really, really sorry. <laughs> it is good, though. Ah, yes. And yet, as good as the Daredevil stuff is, I mean, the other Marvel ones? Hmm. I know a lot of people didn't necessarily like The Punisher, and I think that was more about just the timing of when it came out, as well as the fact that it was kind of a slow start. But I, overall, I thought that was pretty good. It did suffer from a weak villain. Um, very, very unfortunate. Uh, well, no, they did lay the groundwork for one of his villains, uh, Jigsaw, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I don't remember the guy's name, the guy with the messed up eye. Uh, he definitely did get a very good comeuppance, though. Um, so I would watch a season two of Punisher, and that's an interesting point. Actually, of all the Marvel TV shows, uh, it was only Daredevil that I've watched more than one season. Uh, Luke Cage, I did like Luke Cage. Uh, more accurately, I liked the first half. Uh, and that's mostly because, well, uh, where I grew up, I, I can kind of um, reminisce a bit with the style. 
But again, the villain in the first half was Cottonmouth. Great. Second half, eh, eh, I don't know. Eh, and then, uh, why didn't I watch the second season? Well, I think the issue with Luke Cage is simply that he's just too nice to be of interest. I mean, Daredevil, he's, he's, he's got the good side and he's got the bad side. And, you know, when he veers too much to the bad side, I mean, the rest of the cast balances it out and vice versa. That's why it works. Luke Cage, uh, he's just too nice in general to be of interest. Um, uh, you know, the defender of the community, but you know, Daredevil is the defender of Hell's Kitchen, but he at least is, you know, a devil. And as for Jessica Jones, well, I mean, again, you'd think I'd kind of like the character. She's pretty cool looking. She's got interesting powers. Um, uh, but the season one, I mean, I just did not like her. Not at all. I understand, whereas Luke Cage is too nice, Jessica Jones is just too broken. Um, she had very good reason to be broken, and that was the highlight of season one, was David Tennant's Purple Man character. I mean, he was great. I'd put him actually on, right on par with Kingpin, to be honest. Um... Alright, so that was, yeah, Daredevil, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and then we've got, uh, the Iron Fist, and, well, <laughs> I think enough has been said online about Iron Fist. Um, personally, I mean, again, I like, actually like the villains, to be honest, really good. Um, I think some people didn't like it too much for the business talk, whatever, but I thought it was really interesting. Just... Yeah, Danny Rand himself, he was just, he's just a punk. <laughs> That's, he just came across as a punk. He looked like a punk, he sounded like a punk, he acted like a punk. Um, you'd think when they give you the Iron Fist training that they kind of do some mental training in there too, but <sighs> maybe he was the affirmative action hire as far as the monks there were concerned? I don't know. He's just not so good. And then the team up, which was event, which is defenders. Um, I actually like that too. Uh, until until again, well, the underlying problem is simply that a lot of it focused around Electra, which again I just didn't really like the character. Um, but as far the uh, as far as the other ones go, I mean they all blend together pretty good. Jessica Jones actually was more likable. Um, Luke Cage still a little, a little meh, but alright. Uh, Iron Fist was less of a punk. Was still a punk, but a little less of a punk. Um, and Daredevil, of course, Daredevil. So, yeah, wait, anyway, so I didn't watch Luke Cage, I explained why. Uh, I didn't watch Jessica Jones. Well, one, because again, even though she did a better turnaround than season uh, Defenders, um, uh, that first season just still put a bad taste in my mouth. And then, you know, I got the impression from all the marketing that Jessica Jones is supposed to be for women, so... Uh, okay, fine, I'm... I'm the most masculine man there is, so if it's feminine television, then it's just not for me. And I've heard that Iron Fist Season 2 was actually a much better turnaround. But, again, I mean, it was such a punk in the first season that... Uh, he didn't do enough of a turnaround in The Defenders to make me interested in the Season 2, so... And unfortunately, I've heard that there's not going to be a season three for that, which is, oh well, I'm still waiting for to hear about Punisher season two. And more importantly, Daredevil season four. That's the one that really we really want to watch. Ah, uh, oh, I spent a lot of time talking about TV, and instead of talking about what I should be talking about, which is um, my week in review. Hmm, well, I guess that just goes to show just how much of an impact staying up too late 
has had on me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, fortunately, I don't do that sort of thing too often. Fortunately, Netflix doesn't release the must-watch TV very often. And I'm going to go back into talking about Netflix TV. Let's see, so what else would I binge-watch on Netflix? Um, well, the next Stranger Things, of course. Uh, never got, never watched Orange is the New Black. All their, all their other original television stuff, I just, eh, whatever. Um, let me see. Yeah, so the Marvel stuff, I give it a shot. I usually give at least the first season a shot. After that, it's up to how good that season was. Um, Stranger Things, uh, yeah, definite. Um, Voltron. Oh, they did a great job on that one. I mean, it was such a great hook, right? So the 80s nostalgia for me, and then in conjunction with <clears throat> a lot of the creative forces behind Avatar The Last Airbender, fortunately, apparently the first Avatar and not The Legend of Korra Avatar. Oh. Again, something else that you think I'd really, really dig, right? You think I, I would dig Elektra. Uh, because of all the things, all the qualities that she had that you know, would naturally appeal to me, and just like you would think The Legend of Korra would appeal to me too, because Korra has a lot of the characteristics that would appeal to me. I mean, uh, a really cool chick doing martial arts and all sorts of cool things, right? Well, you know, just like Iron Fist, she was a punk. <laughs> she just, She just did not learn anything. I gave it... I gave it three three seasons. I gave it three seasons. You, you figure the first season, okay, she's brash, impulsive, young, okay. And she has a lot of power, yeah, all right. And, but, you know, after everything she's gone through, you figure she had the arc where she's like, okay, maybe I should start slowing things down and taking things a little more. It's not that she didn't take things seriously, it's just that she just never learned. <laughs> just never, ever learned. Learned who to trust, learn who not to trust, learn not to rush into things, <sighs> learn to ask for help. This is a completely unlikable character. And <sighs> I guess it kind of makes sense. Well, does it? Um, uh, that part of the lore is never fully explained how, what force it is that dictates who becomes the Avatar. But uh, clearly, I mean, Avatars are human, and they're not divine by any means. They have essentially divine powers, but they themselves are not divine. So they're flawed humans, they make mistakes. And so sometimes you'll end up with one that will completely destroy everything, I guess. Um, be that as it may, it's not necessarily an interesting character. I mean, it's not like kind of the potential of, say, Darth Vader, right? I mean, this was clearly an established badass character. And you could go back and see how they became that, but... Yeah. 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 Still, anyway. At least, fortunately, they honed their... Uh, well, whatever parts of the creative team honed their chops, and they're now playing it to uh, Legend of Voltron, and which is much better. I mean, you think, for example, that Keith would be an unlikable character the way he started, but he's actually had a fairly decent arc. Oh, oh, look at this. We're almost at the intermission point uh, where my camera would shut off, and I have just spent the entire time talking about Netflix television. Eh, what can I say? It entertains me, and I hope it entertains you. Um, but I will take a break right now and hopefully refocus so that we can talk about the important things. Well, I mean, we're talking about me and things that I like, so I guess that is important. But, things that we should be talking about. So, uh, this will be a 10 second break, and I hope you join me in, after the 10 seconds for the next part. Alright, and we are back. Ooh, right, hold on a second. Let me check the music. It seems to have gotten a lot quieter now. Oh, it's the Can Can by Offenbach. So it's a little, uh, let's see, we'll skip to the Hungarian Rhapsody. 
Ah, there we go. Better, better, better. I briefly contemplated taking just a bit of a break to try and get things together, but there was a very, very strong chance that I would just kind of pass out and go to sleep. Um, so I am going to muscle through because I have a commitment to you, my loyal and wonderful and awesome viewing audience, to produce content. Never promise interesting content, entertaining content, or enlightening content, but content nonetheless. <laughs> yes, yes. That would be a very good marketing pitch, I think. I'd like to see the commercials for that. It would be tongue-in-cheek, of course. I just noticed my tendency right now to tilt to the... to the right. To the right. <clears throat> Am I stiff or something? Do I need to stretch out? Eh, maybe. Possibly. Uh, no, I think I... Well, I'm left-handed, so naturally I would rest that. Okay, I, I guess that makes sense, but... Mm, so kind of odd. As I've mentioned before, balance is key, but... Uh, okay, alright. Maybe I just have to get in the habit of this. I don't know. Uh, alright, focus, focus. Ah, uh, uh, Focus. Week in review. We review the week because... The best way to know where we're going is to figure out where we've been. And if you have been watching my videos, if anybody's been watching my videos, they will have noticed that the past couple days, well, not including Thursday, uh, I've been experiencing some technical challenges, and that, which fortunately I resolved before the week was over, um, I, I probably could have resolved it within... I'd say the first day, but that would have required me to work like, uh, let's see, anywhere from 48 hours, four to eight hours. So, yeah, yeah. But anyway, the actual problem was simply that, uh, let's see, we had the gateway, which is the end point. We have the actual lambda, which is the code that does the real work, resides here. And then to expose that to the outside world, we have our gateway, the Amazon API gateway, here. And then we have the uh, UI web application here. The UI talks to the gateway, the gateway talks to the Lambda. And uh, when I had done all of my Lambda coding, um, it was all here in the Lambda stuff, and I tested here. Uh, well, let's take a step back first. So I had set up the Lambda, the gateway, and the communication from the UI for my contact email stuff first. Then I dived into my Lambda coding, my additional Lambda coding to mess with other services. So that was S3 and uh, Dynamo and some other things, I think. No, I think it was just S3. Um, but as I honed my approach in the Lambda stuff, I refactored my email Lambda. And I tested it, but only in the, e in the Lambda portion of things. I didn't actually test end to end. And so, um, at the beginning of the week, when I was about ready to push uh, my updated website up, I actually did finally test it. And we see that something was broken. And it took me a while to figure that out. What exactly I had done. Uh, so, on the one hand, I figured out what I did wrong, so that's a lesson, that's something to learn. Oh, excuse me for a second. Um, I'm still doing my video backups, uh, backups, converting to digital. And I thought I was making good progress, but then I found another one of these, which, instead of being, like, accomplishing like maybe 15% of what, 15% more of what I needed to do. I think I probably only did 5%. Plus the fact is, the software I was using, um, well, the evaluation period was over, so I had to figure out how to, uh, how to get, make a payment for an actual registration key. 
and that took a while because the website for the company that does this, I mean, they accept your standard uh, credit card payments, but I prefer generally when it comes to online payments to just use PayPal because uh, I've never had PayPal result in my credit cards getting stolen. But fortunately, Citibank has this really cool thing. If you don't, if you don't know about this, you really should. So Citibank has, <coughs> or you know, the city, whatever, has this concept of a uh, virtual, uh, virtual card number. So what you can do is you go into your account online, or you download the software, and you can have it create <coughs> basically a virtual card number that you can use when you're doing online orders. It's not. It's not linked to your actual card, so if that virtual card number gets compromised, you know they don't have to resend you an entirely new card. <clears throat> but even better, you can also specify the limit on that virtual card, as well as how long that virtual card is alive. Um, so, typically, what I would do is I would, oh, um, yeah. So, ideally, what you would do is okay. So you put together your online order. You Figure you see what the cost is, the total, right? So then you bring up the application to create your virtual card number. You make it like the exact amount, or maybe five dollars over, just in the case. <clears throat> and then you specify a lifetime of like only two months for the card, and then you use that to do your online payment. It's really great. Um, I used to do that a lot, quite a bit actually. Um, and then I stopped for whatever reason. I think because the software got outdated or something. And I think they, it was like they were going to stop doing that for a while. So I stopped using it. But then I checked again when I made the payment for this software. And, oh, software. Did I close that? Close that? Yeah. Okay. I'm rambling on about that. But yeah, virtual card numbers. So... Uh, if you do online payments with a credit card and your credit card company does support virtual card numbers, I highly suggest you use those instead. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait. One more thing. So, before what I would just do is I would just, uh, I would rip and then convert. But as it turns out, I can do both at the same time without having a really negative impact on my computer performance. Not sure why, to be honest. What are we up to? Oh, interesting. I have to make another set of folders. All right, all right. Uh, uh copying that, adding to the queue. And in theory, what I would really want to do, I could actually queue up a whole bunch of things. But all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, so I was talking about, okay, so I figured out what caused the problem and I fixed it. Now, the interesting thing to consider then, how to prevent it from happening in the future? Um, a full end-to-end -end test, well, I mean, if you have a continuous integration thing running, then you can check your Lambda stuff, but a continuous end-to-end -end test, I don't think that's really needed, to be honest. The lesson here is I should have been more mindful about the actual usage of what gets changed. Um, I totally, totally forgot the fact that I used my Lambda for the email stuff the full way through as opposed to just at the Lambda point. <clears throat> if I had set it up uh, a full all the way through for those other Lambdas, I probably would have caught it also. Uh, the only reason I didn't do that is because there's no point. I didn't need to expose that functionality because I didn't have any intention of using it. Uh, but still, I guess the lesson is just to be more mindful. So, hopefully, if I remember that lesson, lesson and internalize it and practice it, and then I won't spend um, an entire week of just bumbling around on camera. Hopefully. We'll see. Uh, alright, where does that leave me, though? Well, since that works... Uh, you know what I'm probably gonna do? 
I will probably go ahead and remove all the warnings in my other templates uh, just to make sure, uh, just to bring everything in line. I mean, all the packages are now in line. Um, and I got the warnings gone on my website, so I'll go ahead and remove them in the templates and then go ahead and do uh, an upload of everything. Uh, I uploaded my templates, I think, at the beginning of the month or at, yeah, at the beginning of the month. Um, so I'll go ahead and do another full upload after I do the updates, um, hopefully before the end of the month. That way I should still be under the limit for the AWS uh, free tier threshold. Free tier threshold. I mean, that's the same. So, depending upon the services you use in Amazon, you know, they have uh, limits. Not limits, but uh, I guess it is limits. Uh, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? Markers? Uh, thresholds. Thresholds. Uh, if you exceed certain thresholds, then they have to start charging you. I don't have to. They start charging you. Um, not that they charge you a lot, because my monthly bill still has been 51 cents now for the past two or three months. Uh, but still. If you're going to engage in activities that will start pushing against that threshold, uh, then best to do them, you know, near the end of the month when you're pretty certain you're not going to exceed that threshold. And so far, yeah, I should be fine. So this is, uh, the uploads are called puts because you put things into S3 and uh, those have lower thresholds than gets which is you get things out which happens when somebody would say visit the website so yeah do that do that uh, physical wise training wise took my rest week from training uh, and my diet unfortunately uh, well, you got to give a break. And actually, I have to admit, most of my body, most of the nagging injuries, I think, are pretty much gone. Um, shoulder things from a motorcycle uh, thing, but that's to be expected. Although, it does make me wonder. I suspect as I get older, that's not going to get much better. I'll have to bear that in mind. But... Anyway, so I have full, fully rested and recovered, well, <clears throat> physically, the muscles and the joints and stuff, not mentally, because I stayed up too late last night. So I should be ready to dive back into training, as well as uh, my dietary routine, which is just as good, because I need to really get everything squared away before the holiday season takes its toll. I figure by the time mid-December rolls around, ugh. My weight is not going to go down, it's only going to go up. So I need to cram it down as much as possible. Um, alright, so we got that, got that. Uh, actual job wise, eh, it's still kind of in limbo to be honest. I was told about some potential opportunities, but eh, they're still hashing things out on their own. I will probably won't hear anything about that until November or so. Well, one of those opportunities will help uh, with regards to a certain issue concerning my honey bunny. <sighs> but that's still in the though, so... Yeah. What does it mean for the future? Well... At, at this point... <clears throat> well, as far as my freelancer activities go, at this point, well, I'm... I'm still just spinning in the hamster wheel. So... Well, okay. Sort things out this week as far as getting everything up to date and in line. And then that will also coincide with me getting my training routine back on where it should be. As well as my diet. And so, it will pretty much be near the end of the month. Which will mean I can start November with a fresh push. That's my hope. And that's my plan. But I don't promise. Because Freelancer Joe always keeps his promises, and I can't make that particular promise. Not just yet. But, uh, we are at the 15 minute mark, so I'm going to break this off for now, hopefully before the camera shuts off. <clears throat> Thank you for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed your drink and at least the first half of this episode where I just talked about TV. 
I hope that you have a wonderful rest of the weekend. If you don't join me tomorrow, because tomorrow is going to be a fresh episode of Freelancer Joe. And until the next time we do meet, take care and God bless.